Hi there everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about the latency of the brand new Avatar HD video system from Fat Shark and Walksnail. I'm going to be showing you some footage that I captured with my 960 frames per second high speed camera. And we're going to be looking at how that video can show us how the displays in the Avatar goggles actually work and the latency that the system is able to achieve on all its different modes. And then we're going to be comparing that latency to the latency of all the other FPV video systems that are available, analog, DJI and HD0, to see how the systems stack up. So can Avatar beat out DJI, analog or HD0? Let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it and find out. So let me start by talking you through the test setup that I used for this latency testing. And I've put together this schematic here. You can see that I have a battery connected to a switch that's driving two blue LEDs. And one of the blue LEDs is in the goggles and one of the blue LEDs is stuck to the front of the FPV camera that's connected to the Avatar VTX. Now, when I trigger this switch with my finger, both of these blue LEDs light up at exactly the same moment. And by exactly the same moment, I mean within a few nanoseconds of each other. Now, there are a million nanoseconds in a millisecond, and we're talking about latency measured in several milliseconds. So there is no appreciable difference in time of these two LEDs lighting up. I have a high-speed camera that's pointed into one of the lenses of the goggles, and that high-speed camera can see both the blue LED or some of the light from the blue LED when it lights up, and also the screen that's in the goggles. If we now look at a picture of the real life test setup, you can see all of the different elements. So we have the LEDs here. So this is the avatar camera under this orange tape, and there's an LED stuck right in front of the lens. The avatar VTX is on this quad, and then I have the avatar goggles with the second LED mounted inside the, the eyepiece there, so that it's visible in the high-speed camera when both LEDs are switched on. And I have this flight controller here, and that's serving as the, the power source for the LEDs. So you can see the little push button switch that I've got soldered in there so that I can turn both of these LEDs on by hand. I also have a fan here to keep everything cool while I'm testing and a battery for the VTX and another one for the goggles off screen here. Before I show you some of the test data that I've collected, I wanted to explain in advance what the different parts of the video that you're going to see mean. So in the videos that I'm going to show you, I've got three tests being shown side by side, and they are the three different video modes in the Avatar HD goggles. So the Avatar system has a 720p 120 frames per second mode, and that's displayed in the goggles at 100 hertz. There's a 720p 60 mode and a 1080p 60 mode. And both of those are displayed in the goggles at 60 frames per second. Up in the top left is a frame counter and all of the videos are synchronized so that the blue light from the LED2 in the goggles turns on at frame number 10. So you can see here blue light from the LED in the goggles in all three images at exactly frame number 10. And then at the top is just the uh, megabit setting. So I did some tests at 25 megabits and some tests at 50 megabits as well. So now let's take a look at some video from the tests and then let's talk about what we can see in that video. Before we jump into the results, I want to let you know that this is actually the third in a sequence of latency testing videos that I've done. The first was comparing DJI to analog and HD0, 
And the second was comparing OLED to LCD goggles in terms of latency. I'll put links to both of those videos down in the video description. If you like the work that I'm doing and would like to support more videos like this to build more of a resource for the FPV community, then I'd really appreciate it if you check out my Patreon. You can join from just a few dollars a month and it'll give you access to a special area of my Discord server, as well as some sneak peeks of some of the projects that I'm working on. If you're not in a position where you can support me on a monthly basis right now, but you'd still like to chuck a few dollars in my hat as thanks for the work that I've done on this video, then I'll also put a link to my buy me a coffee page where you can buy me a coffee to keep me awake while I do all this testing. Now let's look at the test results. One of the first things that I noticed when looking at the high speed video, and I'm sure you noticed it as well, is that the displays in the avatar goggles have these black stripes in the high speed footage. What I found is that the width of these black stripes is controlled by the display brightness. So if you set the brightness to one, you get these very wide black stripes. And if you set the brightness to full or 10, you get these narrower black stripes. Even at full brightness, which is 10, the black stripes remain there. And presumably that's because Walksnail doesn't want to drive the displays at a 100% duty cycle in case they shorten the life of the panels or they get too hot or whatever. When you compare that to another OLED goggle, like the Sky O4X, which I have, the Sky O4X doesn't have these multiple zebra stripes. It just has a single black stripe that is the scan line, the scanning line. So as the display is updating, as it's drawing the next frame, this black line moves down the screen, um, taking about 16 milliseconds to, to get to the bottom. And the the new image is redrawn as that line scans. In the avatar goggles, one of these zebra stripes is the scan line. So one of the zebra stripes redraws the screen as it moves down, but the rest of the zebra stripes appear to be there just to reduce the amount of time that each individual OLED pixel is on. Obviously, when you're looking at the display through the goggles, because of image persistence, you cannot see these black lines as they scan down the screen, but they are very visible in the high speed. The next thing I was able to verify was the screen update rate. Now the screen update rate at 60 Hertz is 60 Hertz. So the goggles are updating the screen 60 times per second as each new frame from the VTX comes in. If you change the frame rate setting to the high frame rate setting, the screen updates at 100 hertz. And it's very visible in the high speed video, the difference between the 60 hertz scanning and the 100 hertz scanning. As I mentioned before, despite the fact that there are these multiple zebra stripes on the avatar goggles, the OLED screen updates in a single line that scans from top to bottom. And it's just one of those zebra stripes that's actually moving down the screen and redrawing it. This way of redrawing the screen line by line in a scanning line that goes from top to bottom over one frame or 60 milliseconds at 60 hertz or 10 milliseconds at 100 hertz is very similar to how analog goggles display video and how HD0 displays video. But it is critically different to DJI, which updates the whole screen all at once, almost instantaneously, rather than in this scanning line that moves from top to bottom. So when thinking about how digital video is decoded, a digital video signal is decoded as a full frame. So once that decode is complete, you have a frame buffer that's full of a whole frame. So it makes the most sense to update the screen all at once the moment that that frame of video is available. If instead you update the screen drawing line by line from top to bottom, you effectively add one extra frame of latency because that scanning line takes 60 milliseconds or one frame to move from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen. And only once that scanning line has covered that full distance from top to bottom, has the whole screen been updated with the new data from the frame buffer. And this is going to increase the amount of latency in the system compared to the DJI approach 
where the moment the frame is available, you update the screen instantly all at once. Let's take a look now at the latency test results. Now, if you want to look at these numbers in detail, you can pause the video here, but you can see that I tested all the different modes of the system. So 720p at 120 frames per second, displayed in the goggles at 100 hertz, 720p 60 and 1080p 60, both at 25 megabit and at 50 megabit. I did three repeats and also recorded the reported latency in the goggles as well. Using the number of frames, I could work out an average latency to the first bright pixel and an average latency to the first full bright frame. Something that's very interesting to notice about the reported latency versus the average latency to the first bright pixel is that the reported latency is always half a frame less than the average latency to the first bright pixel. So what I think is happening is that this reported latency is the latency to actually putting the new frame into the frame buffer. But because of the way the display is drawn, once that frame is put into the frame buffer, it still takes half a frame for the screen to finish drawing the last frame and then start drawing the new frame. And so that means that the, the latency to the first bright pixel and the latency to the first full bright frame are significantly more than the reported latency because we have to wait, in this case, we've got a 100 hertz screen, we have to wait five milliseconds for the screen to finish drawing the last half of the previous frame. And then we have to wait an additional 10 milliseconds for it to finish drawing the whole new frame. So that gives us about a 15 millisecond delay in total from the reported latency to when we completely finish the first full bright frame. At 60 hertz, it takes about eight milliseconds to finish drawing the last frame and then another 16 milliseconds, 16, 17 milliseconds to draw the new frame. And we see that reflected in the average latency as well. If you're interested to see how this compares to other systems, I've reproduced all of the data that I collected on all of these different systems from my previous latency testing. I'll put links to those videos down in the video description as well. So if you really want to dive into the individual numbers, you can pause the video here as well. But let's look at the graphs. How does Avatar compare to the other systems? And we'll start by looking at the first bright pixel. So the winner here by far is um, the analog camera with no wide dynamic range. And we'll talk a little bit later about how wide dynamic range makes a difference to latency. That analog system is about two milliseconds, two to three milliseconds of latency. HD zero um, on the SkyZone Sky 4X, which is how I tested them, comes in at about 12 milliseconds with the analog camera with wide dynamic range enabled, taking quite a bit longer, coming in at 19 milliseconds. And then we start having the digital system. So we have DJI at 120 frames per second, at about 23 milliseconds. Avatar at about 24 milliseconds in 50 megabit mode. Then DJI 60 FPS, 25 milliseconds. And then Avatar 720p60 at 29 and 1080p60, quite a bit longer at 42 milliseconds. So you can see that that high detail mode, that 1080p mode for the avatar system, really does introduce quite a lot more latency, it takes quite a bit longer to decode that higher resolution frame. The second chart here is the time to first bright field. Now, I think this is probably the most important graph out of the three that I'm gonna show you. And this is the time it takes, not just for the first bright pixel, but for the first full field. So that's an image from the full field of view of the camera reaching your eyes. So depending on where the object is in the vision of the camera, it doesn't matter. The first time that you'll be able to see everything the camera sees is after this time to first bright field. 
And here we can see that the analog camera takes 19 milliseconds if it has no wide dynamic range to get that full field. HD0 takes 29 milliseconds to get a full field visible. And DJI at 120 frames per second takes only a little bit longer under ideal conditions, about 31 milliseconds. The avatar system, 720p at 120 frames per second, but displayed at 100 hertz, takes a bit longer than DJI 120 FPS, taking about 34 milliseconds or so. But then analog with wide dynamic range, which is what most people fly when they fly analog. In fact, I really don't know of many analog cameras for sale nowadays that don't have wide dynamic range. That's taking about 35 milliseconds to give you the first full field. So more latency than Avatar and more latency than DJI at 120 frames per second. And then we have DJI 60, Avatar 720p60 and Avatar 1080p60 with increasing latency. And again, that 1080p60 mode with the higher resolution frame taking significantly longer to, to decode and having significantly more latency as a result, 59 milliseconds. The final chart that I'll show for completeness is the time to first bright frame. Now for digital systems, the time to the first bright field and the time to the first bright frame are the same because they send the whole frame as one field. For analog cameras, it works a little bit differently. An analog camera sends half the frame, half the vertical resolution as one field and half the vertical resolution as a second field. And then the goggles interlace them together to give you a, a detailed image. That means that to get the full resolution, the full detail out of an analog camera, it takes two fields to, to get that full information. In terms of frame rate, an analog camera might have a field rate of 60 hertz, but it only has a frame rate of 30 frames per second. How important this is in terms of capturing motion versus capturing detail um, is up for debate, but I include this graph anyway, and you can see that time to first bright frame is fastest for HD0 at 29 milliseconds, and both DJI at 120 frames per second and Avatar at 120 frames per second displayed at 100 hertz. All of these systems are slightly faster than analog with no wide dynamic range and significantly faster than analog with wide dynamic range. So if you really think you need that extra detail, for example, you're looking for you know, thin pieces of scraggle or ghost branches and things like that, then it's going to be the time to the first full frame that is going to be most interesting to you. If you're looking more to capture motion or to look for large objects, then probably it's going to be the time to the first bright field that's most important. The final thing that I wanted to talk about, and I don't know if it's discussed that much when, when talking about latency, is wide dynamic range. Now, most analog cameras employ wide dynamic range to improve the image detail. And the way wide dynamic range works is that the analog camera will capture one field with a fast shutter speed and the second field at a slower shutter speed and then it will kind of digitally combine those images before it um, converts it to an analog video signal and sends it to the VTX. Now the result is an image with much more detail in the shadows and much more detail in the highlights because it can digitally combine both of those fields to get detail across a wider dynamic range. But wide dynamic range also adds an unavoidable one full field of extra latency, which is 16.7 milliseconds at 60 hertz. Almost all modern analog cameras have this wide dynamic range feature and therefore have the extra latency. So if you're looking for the absolute lowest latency video link, you need to be making sure that you're buying an analog camera that doesn't have wide dynamic range or you're turning wide dynamic range off and verifying that that eliminates the extra 16.7 milliseconds of latency. So that brings us neatly to the conclusions. And obviously you're going to want to draw your own conclusions based on the data that I've presented here for all of the different systems. But I wanted to give you my thoughts as well. 
I think that overall the avatar system compares quite favorably to the latency of analog with wide dynamic range and the DJI system at equivalent settings, so 720p 120 frames per second and 720p 60. The high detail 1080p mode of the avatar system is quite a bit slower than the DJI system. So you're trading off a bit of extra detail for more latency. And I think that's an acceptable trade-off that, that some pilots will want to make and other pilots won't want to make. But I think it's, it's a trade-off that's easy to understand, right? If you want more detail, you accept a little bit of extra latency. In terms of the discrepancy between reported latency and the measured latency, uh, that's down to the displays, the OLED displays, and they are lovely displays. They're very clear, high contrast, beautiful colors. So I guess you have to accept that if you're using those displays and they redraw as a scanning line rather than all at once, that you're introducing a little bit more latency because of that. Um, I don't think it's make or break either. I mean, at 100 hertz, it's only about five milliseconds or so, and it still puts it you know, very competitive with analog systems. Let me know down in the comments what you think and what system you're leaning towards based on these test results. Of course, I'm excited to test the new HD0 system. I'm going to reach out to Carl and try and get a, a system for review to test the latency of his new goggles, which promise four milliseconds, I think it was, glass to glass, and compare that to all of the other systems that I've tested so far. Make sure you're subscribed and ring the notification bell so that you see that video as soon as it becomes available. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.